Next, you're going to need a good quality microphone. During this part of the video, I'm actually going to be covering two different mates and models of microphones because they both have slightly different characteristics and tonal qualities to suit different voice types. Also, they're both different microphone types. One's a condenser mic and the other's dynamic. These days, if you've got £200 to spend on a microphone, you're in luck because you'll have a large choice of some excellent quality microphones. Gone are the days when you had to spend £2,000 on a Neumann U87. Now, don't get me wrong, the U87 is still one of the best mics in the world and it's still one of my favourite microphones today. But there are other microphones that I used in top recording studios around the world that would cost way less and do the same job, be it with a slightly different tonal characteristic. At the end of the day, most of today's quality mics are all as good as each other. They just have slightly different tonal characters and with the use of plugins in your door, it's quite easy to get one mic to sound like another anyway. And I've yet to hear a commercially released track, at least any track released during the last half century, that didn't have some sort of EQ, reverb, compression, or some other effect applied to it. And as soon as effects get applied to a vocal track, a lot of the microphone tonal characteristics are changed anyway. They're often disguised or masked. Honestly, I don't think there's a recording engineer on the planet who could successfully take the Pepsi challenge test and distinguish between, say, a Shure SM7B and a Rode NT1 by the time they've been mixed, EQ'd, and had a degree of reverb, delay, compression, and been pushed through the amp simulator. What's more important is to choose a mic that will suit your voice and singing style, or whoever's going to be singing on your tracks. So with this in mind, again, after a ton of research and trying out and testing various mates and models of mics, and I've owned loads, including the Neumann U87 AI, I've cherry-picked the following two microphones, the Electrovoice RE20 and the Sennheiser MK4. The Electrovoice RE20 cost around £475, while the Sennheiser MK4 comes in at around 250 depending on where you shop. Now, these two mics are quite different for different reasons, which I'll cover now but both are stunning vocal mics and both work perfectly with the Antelope Discrete 4 and Zen Go, as both these audio interfaces have a massive 65 dB of microphone gain. Okay, I figured I'd talk about these two microphones while actually speaking into them so you can hear the difference in tonal qualities between the two, so I'll start by talking about this Sennheiser MK4 right here while actually speaking into it, and then in a couple of minutes I'll swap it out for the Electrovoice RE20. I've got the microphone at a slight angle, about 45 degree angle to the corner of my mouse, so I'm speaking slightly across it. This is a technique I generally use even when I'm using a pop shield because when you speak slightly across the mic with it aiming towards the corner of your mouth, it just helps reject plosives. So starting with the Sennheiser MK4 here, um, the reason I picked this one as one of my two choices is simple. It's sonic and tonal qualities. Sennheiser are part of the Neumann group and between them, I don't think there's another company on the planet that knows as much about microphone technology. The MK4 is designed around the much more expensive Neumann U87, and it shares some of the same of the U87's tonal qualities too. If you get in close while singing, you'll notice some of that lovely dark Neumann U87 colour with crystal clear mid-tones and a slightly bright but pleasant top end. I've tried loads of other mics costing four times the price that didn't impress me anywhere near as much as this Sennheiser MK4 did. The MK4 has an all metal construction with a metal grill and it has a good amount of weight to it. Basically, it's built to the same studio grade standards as the Neumann U87. It's a bare bones microphone, so there's no switches or buttons, just a single XLR socket on the bottom. It has a cardioid polar pattern which picks up sound from the front while rejecting sounds from the back and sides, which is exactly what you want for doing vocal work. There isn't much about the NK4 that I don't like. Background noise rejection is pretty good, and I just love the subtle coloration. For singing, the MK4 has a slightly airy and open sound, which will add a slightly different dimension and character to your vocals. There's hardly any sibilance at all, none if you use a pop filter like I am here, which you should do, and the proximity effect is to die for. When you get in nice and close, you get what only Neumann and Sennheiser can do, that lovely silky smooth proximity effect, controlled low frequencies, crystal clear mids, and plenty of bite in the high frequencies. This all adds up to transparent and super clear vocal recordings, be it sung or spoken. The MK4 is a large capsule, phantom powered condenser studio microphone, and it's very easy to drive. 
With the Antelope Discrete 4 or Zengo, you simply turn the phantom power on via the Antelope Launcher software, and I found that for close vocals, I only needed to dial in about 26 dB of gain, or with my mouth a little further away like I am here, approximately 7 or 8 inches, I dialed in 36 dB of gain. Overall, it's a superb microphone that will suit a wide range of voices, but it's especially good if you have a soft, rounded voice and you want to add a bit of edge and sparkle to it. The MK4 would be an ideal mic for vocalists such as Michael Jackson, Billie Eilish, Celine Dion, Sam Cooke, Michael Bublé and Ellie Goulding for example, as these singers all have nice, smooth, soft, rounded vocal tones, so the MK4 will help spice them up a little and give them a bit more sparkle. If you go for the MK4, I'd strongly recommend spending an extra £95 on the Sennheiser MKS4 shock mount, as this will totally eliminate any vibrations travelling up the mic stand to the microphone. Okay, so I've swapped the Sennheiser out and now I've got the Electrovoice RE20 set up here. The RE20 is a different type of microphone, whereas the Sennheiser MK4 is a condenser mic, the RE20 is a dynamic mic, so it's not phantom powered and is therefore harder to drive and requires more gain from the audio interface. Again, the Antelope Discrete 4 and Zengo both have 65 dB of gain, so either of them will drive this RE20 with headroom to spare. I find for close vocal work, where I'm right on top of the mic, the RE20 required about 55 dB of gain, and at about 8 inches away it required about 60 dB of gain. But do make sure that the phantom power is turned off in the software for the audio interface or it could potentially damage the mic as it's not phantom powered and it does not require this extra voltage. Unlike the Sennheiser MK4, which is a side address mic, the RE20 is an end address mic, meaning you sing into the end of it. The RE20 is built like a tank with an all metal construction and a metal grill. There are eight slats with a metal grill going down the side of the mic which is a unique design to the RE20 and it decreases the amount of proximity effect that you get with it. The only switch on the RE20 is a high pass or low pass cut filter and that's it. So like the Sennheiser, a pretty basic design. Like the MK4, the RE20 also has a cardioid polar pattern which is what's required for vocalists. The RE20 is a classic and for good reason, it sounds amazing with vocals and it does a super job with background rejection noise. Admittedly, the RE20 is double the price of the Sennheiser, but it's a different sort of microphone that produces a different sort of sound. The RE20 mic is more suitable for harsher voices that have some grit and bite to them as it will help to round them off a little. This microphone would suit singers such as Rod Stewart, Kelly Jones, Kurt Cobain, Adele, John Bon Jovi, Joe Cocker, Bonnie Tyler, Tom Waits, Janis Joplin or anybody else with a similar gruff, raspy singing voice that has some edge to it. With voice types like these, the RE20 will help tone them down a little for a more pleasing presentation. If you have a soft, smooth voice, you don't want to be using a mic that has a smooth, rounded tonal quality or you'll just end up with an ultra soft and overly smooth vocal track that won't cut through the mix that well. Likewise, if you have a voice like Kelly Jones of the Stereophonics, you won't want to be using a microphone that has a large amount of grit and bite to it or you'd end up with an overly gritty and edgy sound that you'd have to smooth out with EQ in post. The Electrovoice RE20 has been around for about 50 years and it's considered an industry standard in both recording studios and in radio broadcast. It's got by far the best proximity effect of any microphone ever made. Proximity effect, if you don't know, is that exaggerated low frequency bass sound that you get when you put your mouth right close up to the mic, which results in a horrible booming sound. The RE20 has a unique design so no matter how close you get to it when you're singing there's virtually no proximity effect at all, which is why radio DJs and broadcasters prefer it and why studio sound engineers around the world love it. So there it is, my recommendations for two different types of microphone and they're the two microphones that I use all the time. If you want a phantom powered condenser mic I can't recommend the Sennheiser MK4 enough. If you want a dynamic mic then the Electrovoice RE20 should be at the top of your list.